Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session. And we are going to uh, we are going to begin our next session. That is called entrepreneurship education within higher education institutions. Because you know that uh, we at the university level, the most of the students would like to know about entrepreneurship. Sometimes uh, we get to learn about entrepreneurship when we are at our university. So whether it is helpful or not, or how much we can do to improve the situation. So to discuss this point, we are going to have a power packed panelist today those who are experts in this field. So I would like to welcome all of you to our session and I would like to invite our panelists to our session. First of all, I would like to invite them to you. As Ifka Heather, team leader, European Union and ADA funded project Aled Kosovo. We have with us Diana, now, Carolina Rogers Torres, Head Department of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, Universidad de la Sabana. We have Analia Pastron, Professor, Executive Director of Smartly Social Enterprise on the SDGs. We have Andrew Sissam, CEO and Founder, Ontario College of Business and Technology. And we have with us Dr. Ruby Bakshi, founder Ray Academic Suisse. Welcome to our session. Before going into our main session, I would like to invite all of you to introduce yourself to our audience so that they get to know about yourself a little bit, just in a few words. Starting with F. Kamenov. Yuti, thank you very much. First of all, kudos to an excellent event organized and bringing the whole world on my screen and in my apartment. My name is Evka Heather, happy to contribute, proud to contribute more than 30 years of experience, true believer, crazy about uh, education, and true believer in entrepreneurship as a key competence can help us to make world better. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now I would like to invite Ms. Dana. Hello, everybody. Okay, I'm a passionate for entrepreneurship and innovation. I head of the Department of Innovation at the University of La Savannah. And the most important thing is that I like, I love to empower women to be, begin new things, new, to experiment new opportunities and to identify that opportunities. I teach entrepreneurship, big data, I, in, I do research in technology, and I love to be here with you, sharing my knowledge and keeping touch. Thank you so much, Ms. Diana. And now I would like to hear from Alania. Hi, thank you all. Uh, it's a real great pleasure to be with, with all of you sharing this panel. And well, I'm the founder and executive director of Smarty, a social enterprise that is leading the communication and localizing the sustainable development goals in the public sector, private sector, academia. Uh, we are co-chairs of the World Urban Campaign of UN Habitat. And also I've been uh, the co-chair of the Women Entrepreneur Conference of the International Council for Small Business here in USA. Uh, so I'm really glad to be here sharing different ideas about entrepreneurship and especially as Diana said, um, how to empower women uh, to get finance, uh, to, to get more tools in terms of uh, well, entrepreneurship. So I'm really glad to be with you. Thank you so much, Analia. Now I'd like to hear from Andrea. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, good, uh, hello to my esteemed colleagues and the audience and to you, Beauty, as well. My name is Andrea Sessum. I'm the founder and CEO of Ontario College of Business and Technology. I'm also an ambassador for women in uh, tech. 
the global movement, and I'm the senator for uh, Canada for World Angels Investment Forum. Wow, that's great. Now I'd like to know from Dr. Ruby Bakshi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Ruby Bakshi Khurdi, uh, an Indian, but settled in Switzerland and uh, leading a life as an educationist. It's a pleasure to be here on this platform. Thank you so much, Beauty, for inviting us for this WEC 2020, which is an amazing platform to put all the women together. Um, as an educationist, I'm very happy to talk about various things which are going to be leading our women. Um, I have been teaching here in the Swiss private colleges to hospitality and business students. With that, I'm also the ambassador for various women networks like Women Economic Forum, then All Ladies League, Female Wave of Change, Global Goodwill Ambassadors, and of course, a brand ambassador for the launch watches. The goal and motive for all these organizations is to whim, bring women on a platform and give them a voice. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruby. Now, at this point, I would like to start our program regarding the education. As we know that many people say that entrepreneurship education is not required to become an entrepreneur. And even the, in the higher educational institutions, we do not need any entrepreneurship education. How do you actually evaluate these things? In your opinion, does it necessary to have an entrepreneur education some, or training, something like this one, starting with EFCA? Beauty, thank you very much. So when we are addressing this topic, there are two main areas which need to be addressed. The one area is to be entrepreneur. So to be the real one, the acting, starting a business transfer, the idea into practice. But the other much broader thing is to be entrepreneurial. So the, every participant of every society, if we want to build entrepreneurial society with um, responsibility towards the, what we are doing, developing and contributing, then it's necessary that we address this very important thing, how to be entrepreneurial. And this is what needs to be raised, and this is what needs to be developed from the early age. Why is that? Because current scenarios all around the world are showing us that the only certain thing today is uncertainty. And this is why entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial people are the key. Because entrepreneurial person or society is the constructive person. The person who is able and society who is able to detect the problem and try to solve the problem, not to make destructive actions, but to contribute to the constructive development, change in development, development. And the worldwide nowadays, this is what is needed. In my past, I was contributing and one of the authors of EU framework, competence framework for entrepreneurship as a key competence. As defined within the EU policy framework, one of the priorities for every citizen of Europe is to be able to act and think entrepreneurially, not just in the business world, but also in the public sector, in every sphere of activities. Being a director for 10 years of Southeast European Center for Entrepreneurial Learning, this is the, the lesson what is learned. If we are aware that the most valuable resource we have are people, and then we need to be aware that also the future, our future is in our schools today, and entrepreneurs are in our schools today. So when we are talking about whole educational vertical, then it's a necessary, it's unavoidable that entrepreneurship as a key competence is integrated in every sphere of the learning system, because this is how we are contributing to development of the entrepreneurial values this is how we are contributing to the uh, entrepreneurial setting, and this is how we are contributing to the overall development. Uh, when you're coming from the countries which are boosting and trying their best to develop their econo economies, and currently I'm working in Kosovo as a team leader of EU-funded project, but coming from Croatia as the youngest EU member state, we need to be aware of the environment of Kosovo, the youngest nation in Europe, with the overall composition of economy that more than 85% are micro businesses, then we become aware that entrepreneurship 
is a necessity. How we will raise and born entrepreneurs, this is not to be discussed. This is the same discussion we are discussing about uh, perfect athletes or uh, Olympic winners, or we are putting as our goal that we would like to, that every citizen of our society is able to run and live healthy. So just to conclude, uh, there is no discussion, do we need that or not? We now need to discuss how we will implement, how the higher educational institutions will serve as the lighthouses contributing to the lower level of educational system to build capacities that every student, every citizen, parents, because when we are influencing in the school and educational systems, we are also influencing parents. So now it's a time to discuss how, not anymore why. So looking forward to further discussion about that. Thank you, Beauty. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to know about the perspectives from Ms. Diana. Thanks, Beauty. Okay, when we talk about entrepreneurs need education to become entrepreneur, in, I'm from Colombia, and in, in the kind of country that we are, we are growing in, from, from the global economy and we need to improve our economy. We think that sometimes we, need, we don't need a gene, we have the gene of entrepreneurship. And I know that entrepreneurship can talk. I experience it almost every week in the courses that I teach at the University of La Savannah when we analyze, for example, some entrepreneurs like Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, Kylie Jenner, and other visible entrepreneurs, and they seem to be different from us. And they seem like extraordinary, but each of their success is a result of maybe a great product that made them successful, not some special gene that they have. So I found that to be a successful entrepreneur, you must have four characteristics. One is an specific expertise. The second one is the innovative products. The third one is the access to capital and a team building. But the main issue is to have an innovative product. And the process to making an innovative, a great product, an innovative product can be taught. The big challenge in entrepreneurship education is to have methodology for teaching entrepreneurship. In my case, I implemented challenge-based learning methodology for develop a great product. Why? Because in that methodology, we can identify cl clearly a problem, a, a problem that is, is, it has an insight to the consumer. We can develop a product for a specific segment. It can be for local or, inter or global. And at the end, we can launch that entrepreneurship. Teaching entrepreneurship requires method, practice, action, and constructions, and require other kind of mindset in professors too. It requires that professor is more as a mentor, is following the process of students to reach their own goals, not the goals that we want, like professors. It's the goal that they they want to reach. And and motivation, motivation to develop their skills, to develop a good opportunities for, for students and for entrepreneurs, and to develop an ecosystem to support their, their ideas and their processes and entrepreneurships. Thank you, so. Ms. Diana. Now I would like to know from Ms. Analia Pastron on this regard. Thank you, Beauty. Um, well, I think I fully agree with the, my president uh, colleagues that um, I think it's a combination between the tools that we give through the universities, through the School of Businesses, but also the environment. I think the ecosystem that 
uh, we need to create uh, through not only universities, the local governments, the civil societies, is a key point to, to get a, a, a new culture in terms of entrepreneurship and also uh, the, well, the tools that we, we really need to boost entrepreneurship in our, in our society. So it's something that is a combination. Perhaps we are doing a huge effort from the private sector, but if, you, well, if we won't have the, 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 activi the, the tools or the regulations or the legal framework uh, in your community, it's, it's going to be very difficult for that entrepreneur to develop a, a business. So uh, regarding that, I think that we need to to think in terms of entrepreneurship as a as an important um, milestone that we need to get in in our urban economies, in our cities. Uh, thinking as a huge um, combination, or um, well, yeah, I, I think a masterpiece of um, to to get and develop a better. Um, a, a better environment um, and of course regarding teaching entrepreneurship sometimes the students they need to get uh, to uh, to get the knowledge of how to to do a canvas or uh, a model business um, but sometimes also they need some advice regarding legal and accountancy tools um, so in some occasions they have the the, the knowledge through their own network, but usually they, they don't have that. And at least I, we have, we've been observing that in Latin America. And so that's something that we need to, 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 to create in some way, the tools for the, uh, for the entrepreneurs regarding that, those kinds of advice. Um, and of course, the university is the better place to get that tools, but not uh, all the time, the entrepreneurs are uh, looking for those tools in the academic uh, environment. So that's, I think that's something that we need to change too. Um, because as Diana said, they, they think that they're going to get this, um, these opportunities that these successful unicorns or, or uh, successful entrepreneurs. And it's not- Thank you so much, Analia. I will okay. come back to you Thank again. You. I would like to know from Andrea, as you are the CEO and the founder, what do you think? Does it require to have entrepreneurship education or not? So uh, I think that some of the uh, globally competitive universities uh, who have understood the concept of fostering entrepreneurship early on uh, have done really well and have been really successful. And there are usually um, universities and colleges that have incubators on premises. Uh, they're able to have their graduates uh, work on their businesses and business ideas within the incubator and then connect them to uh, further funding, networking, equity-based accelerators, uh, venture groups, and you know government programs. And I think there is also a huge opportunity uh, for colleges uh, both community and private colleges to adopt the concept of entrepreneurship as this is almost an, uh, non-existent at this level. Uh, you know, you have the KPNG uh, 2020 report that shows that 50% of young people um, found it too expensive to go to university. So I think there is an overall shift in demand of higher education uh, and it's changing. And hence the emergence, uh, which we see now, uh, entrepreneurship schools and uh, boot camps. So I think that colleges as well uh, need to innovate and uh, embrace the curriculum of entrepreneurship in order to stay competitive and to capture the 50% of people who may find universities expensive. I think they need to create incubators and mentoring networking and funding opportunities uh, for the students and, so and to thank you Andrea I'll come back to you again now I'd like to know from dr. Ruby that what do you think on these issues I completely agree with all the things that my you know panelists just mentioned it's very true uh, based on the current pandemic um, 
we as educationists or we as teachers had to react instantly we couldn't be following what we had been following for a couple of months so yes as entrepreneurs have to be prepared of the risk have to be prepared of any unforeseen circumstances that can come up same is the task of uh, i would say educationists as well what happened during pandemic that you had to relax you couldn't be just following and sitting on your uh, things that have been successful in the past so the present requirement is of uh, healthy collaborations and the communications creating communities to support each other and also keep on emphasizing on uh, making sure that students are understanding what is happening because sometimes we assume that they are aware you know they are reading the news they are even it's creating a buzz so they are aware of it so as an educationist i think it's very important uh, it's double the responsibility of uh the teachers to make sure that you are consistently creating a safe learning environment because which has moved from um, face to face classrooms to virtual classrooms so make sure that the students are there with you they are understanding what needs to be done how it needs to be done and the second question which you asked was um, how entrepreneurs uh, should be emphasizing or be getting education uh, to understand how to learn and what to learn it's also a fact like you know it's important uh even educationists or entrepreneurs need to know various departments various skills which are important um as an entrepreneur to operate the business so they should be having a bit of information about everything because if they have information they can uh, you know they can do it they can uh, use it in their businesses and make it profitable be prepared for the change uh, take risk into calculation all the time and consistently work on swot sport analysis keep on checking on their strengths and weaknesses and at the same time because of the current scenario be prepared for whatever threats are coming from the market be prepared for whatever uh, opportunities they are seeing so that they can grab it at good point of time so i think uh, it's it's a need of the hour is the call for action uh, where everyone the whole world has become small just as we are sitting here on the panel discussing so the world has become small uh, to take action and deal with uh, whatever we can do to bring about a healthy and uh, positive functioning of uh, the overall thing thank you thank you dr rubi now i would like to go back to next question is that you know, we are talking about the importance of entrepreneurship education and every teacher you need to show them the students that you should know what is it is and how it should be learned in the classroom so my next question to fk actually what practical changes teachers need to make in the classroom to support these things so that they can develop their entrepreneurial mindset thank you vyoti so first of all if you are serious with implementation of um, entrepreneurship is a key competence then we need to be aware that the system support is needed system support means that every teacher is aware of the definition of learning outcomes need to be implemented and this is why from the serious point of view we need to have the competence framework developed and this is why i truly uh, truly believe in implementation of eu level developed competence framework for entrepreneurship the second thing we need to shift from uh, the mantra that teacher one teacher can make a change it's nice to believe but it's a hollywood dream if we really want to have the system change then we need to shift from teacher to the school importance because the school is nucleus of the educational system school equal university equal kindergarten for me everything is the school it's the learning environment so the second shift must be in the directions schools to become nests of entrepreneurial way of thinking and doing in this way that means that we need to have the whole let's just say movement the entrepreneurial movement to prepare teachers in their initial teacher training and continuous teacher training how to apply in their respective areas define learning outcomes and third thing to be very aware it's wonderful when you have the well developed country but also the other countries are doing their best and very hard to develop themselves and contribute to the economy and industry and but also on the other hand they are dealing with a very serious problem which is corruption if we are serious with targeting corruption then we need to target from the early age what we are calling the socially responsible entrepreneurial behavior that every student is aware of financial literacy public goods approach and this is the only way how we can contribute that 
following the recommendation of the Council of Europe uh, State uh, Attorney and Defender's opinion, which is strictly said in that direction. And third point, and this is the topic of our conference, is women entrepreneurs. It's wonderful to come from the well-developed country, but the other countries, again, they're giving their best. I'm in Kosovo, wonderful ladies, uh, doing entrepreneurship activities, doing their best, but it's only 9.3%. So if we are serious with supporting women entrepreneurship, then we need to support girls in empowering them, in, in, in uh, empowering them with a package of knowledge and competences to feel self-confidence to start a business in the future. So just to conclude, the movement is from teacher to school, the movement is the whole society support with serious instruments, competence framework, teaching methods and tools, and not to be forgotten, entrepreneurship and digital literacy from today must go hand in hand because this is industry 4.0. Thank you, Beauty. Thank you so much, Dr. Evka. You have said important things about entrepreneurship education. Now, I would like to know from Ms. Diana in this regard. Okay, thank you. Okay. Practical changes that teacher can make in the classroom, I identify four practical changes. One is the method is challenge-based learning requires a transition for lecturing to facilitating and mediating. The teacher must design learning modules to meet the purpose of challenge and encourage students to explore, experiment, and discover new scenarios so that the students develop disciplinary and transversal competences at the same time. Additional evaluation designs should focus on the performance and not only on the outcome. The second one is work collaboratively and interdisciplinary with other professors and students. Third one is work hard in the mindset. Change my own startup. And for the, the last one, and for me the most important, is the teamwork with women and men. Collaboration is the key in this in the in this post-pandemic uh, situation, we need to change our idea about competitive business to collaborative business, to grow up faster and easier, to work and developing in entrepreneurial skills. And it comes not only from the classes, it comes from hackathons, from extracurricular events and networking programs. And the teaching available both in the classroom and outside are extremely relevant and immediately valuable to the students so that in this environment they attack the subject with a greater level of interest and commitment. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diana. Now I would like to know from Analia. Well, I think that we need to implement more mentorship mentorship in our universities uh, because the students they need to to well to practice and develop their business ideas with the with the professors with the experts and not only from their own community also uh, mentors from uh, other parts of the globe that they will give you the more um, more instruments to implement the, the the ideas and to and to create business models that are su successful in other parts of the globe, and probably you could adapt to your own community. So so I think I really think that the, right now we need to to get more spaces with mentorship programs in our universities um, and especially. Um, these practical activities, like Diana uh, said, um, hackathons, uh, competitions, um, in different languages as well, because we need to, to present our ideas globally right now. So I think that in English is a, is a, is a key point in regarding that. And um, so it's something that, yeah, we need to, to implement. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, mentorship is important. So I'd like to now know from Andrea. 
Thank you. I agree with my colleagues, and I, I think it's it's not sufficient for um, higher educational institutions to merely provide learning opportunities, you know, such as guest lectures, watching videos, uh, internships. I think it also has to provide real life experience to entrepreneurs um, on how to uh, run a simulation of how to run an actual business in order to encourage the students to be successful entrepreneurs and to take it even a, a step further because uh, not everybody uh, learns the same. Uh, they, you know, institutions must provide um, support for uh, reflective thoughts such as mentoring and coaching sessions. And I agree, I agree also regarding hackathons and, you know, maybe even uh, connecting with digital parks, uh, incubators, accelerators, uh, venture groups to, uh, to access pitch competitions um, uh, where they, they have opportunities to pitch their businesses and they also have opportunities to access additional funding. Um, and I, um, I think entrepreneurship education helps in, in fostering uh, of the entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship in turn creates new ventures for companies. Companies create jobs. Jobs obviously have impact, positive impact on the on the economy. Um, and I think so, we, we will you. need um, more, definitely a more st stabilized uh, economy now post COVID for everybody. Thank you so much, Andrea. Now, lastly, I would like to know from Dr. Ruby Bakshi. It's very true. Uh, the requirement post-pandemic, uh, during pandemic, has been a very big challenge for everyone. And just as my, you know, panelists were mentioning, it's the need of the hour is to have something which is more sustainable. Because if we have something more sustainable, that's what is going to bring about the required changes in the coming future. Uh, right now, most of the students are going through a state of shock. Uh, you know, uh, confusion, frustration, anger, because a lot of them lost their jobs, a lot of them uh, lost their internships, they were not able to follow the required, the calculated part they had done. So I think it is important, uh, the schools, uh, especially higher education, should be providing a safe learning environment, which is understanding them. The need of the hour is to understand uh, the students and prepare them for whatever worst can come. They have already seen the worst, but still keep on preparing them, keep on fostering uh, the situation in such a way that they don't think over it or they don't ponder over it for a long period of time. Uh, during pandemic, uh, I have been talking a lot about uh, 3E theory, which I created uh, during this period of time uh, just to help my students, which is um, the one, educate. You need to communicate constantly with the people, with the students, with uh, the stakeholders, anyone and everyone who is a part of that uh, scenario keep on educating them what is coming up have a healthy com communication and have a lot of community building because that's what helps them that's what prepares them for the unforeseen changes that are coming up uh, second is to empathize with the situation and with the people you have to sit in their shoes to make them understand to make them feel that this is happening it is okay it will pass on you know so you have to be very very uh, having like again like a mentoring like a be a very strong mentor uh, become like a buddy like a have a buddy relationship with the students because it doesn't matter what age they are when such kind of situations are going on it does make people um, scared it does make people um, think about what next is going to happen so of course mentor relationship is very very important um, create uh, simulations as uh, my colleagues already mentioned it is important uh, entrepreneurs need to have those kind of situations that they are prepared so that is why it is very important when you are creating simulations you're putting them in that situation real life situation they will act they are not going to react but we are preparing them how to act in a proper manner. Lead them how they do. We are not putting them, we are not spoon feeding them, but create those scenarios that they are ready. They are prepared for it. Um, have healthy role playing sessions because you can even do that. Uh, thanks to technology, we can do that in the breakout sessions, uh, you know, uh, put them in breakout rooms, mix and match, you know, try to have students from different uh, countries, uh, make sure that you are involving each and every person so that we are having a healthy uh, diversity as well as inclusion. Not that the people who are making noise, we are taking them into consideration, but making sure that everyone is there. And third E, that is empower. 
we definitely need to empower our students, have faith in them, uh, make them believe that, yes, they can do it. It's not something that we have to be there with them all the time. Create such situations like have healthy collaborations with the people in the industry. Because, yes, pandemic has created a lot of gaps in the industry and we need to build them. And that's only possible if we have healthy collaborations with the alumni, have great alumni network, have a great, um, you know, uh, visual learning as well as uh, mentoring, coaching, uh, wherever it's possible or needed, even tutor the student. Because some of them, uh, they might be really um, facing trouble in, in accepting or uh, understanding the virtual classrooms. So make sure that you are providing a healthy learning environment and a healthy community, even on a virtual platform. And it is only possible if the schools and colleges are into it together. It is easily possible in developed countries, but for developing countries also, we need to put it at more grassroots level. Break it into steps, break it into small, uh, you know, packets so that it is acceptable and applicable at all levels. Even at the grassroots level, they're able to do it. So I would, you know, just say uh, the need of the hour is have healthy collaborations, create more uh, real life situations, simulations so that students are prepared for how to deal with in a real entrepreneurial situation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruby. Now I'd like to know from Dr. Efka. Uh, so what do you think? Can you please give us any suggestion or the advices that we can accommodate in our institution so that the, P, the students actually get empowered and they get, get to develop their entrepreneurial mindset, starting with Efka? Thank you, Beauty. I strongly believe in the saying, when people in the good will sit together, the problems become opportunities. And this is what we're building here in the Kosovo. City of Pristina is the capital, the mayor, the rector of University of Pristina, the oldest one in Kosovo, and the president of Kosovo Chambers of Economy. They sit together and they decide that we need to start with the system building. And this is why they started and initiated what they called cluster hub, to support Kosovo go smart and Kosovo goes entrepreneurially. So, yeah, and beauty, you put us together from all over the world. And this is the lesson learned. We need to be together. We need to start for, from, for system building. System building means our educational institutions must become lighthouses of entrepreneurial way of thinking and doing, as well as nests for future entrepreneurs. Thank you, beauty. And thank you for this great, excellent event. Thank you so much, Ifka, for your nice words. Now, I'd like to know from Ms. Diana, any final remarks? I, thank you, Bidi. I think one of the most important activities that we have to, to carry out is collaborate, is mentoring, collaborate, to, to work in the mindset and admire. We, we in our in our countries, we admire more soccer players than science. So we need to push more science in our countries, more uh, activities that carry innovation, the entrepreneurship-based innovation, I think is a good way to change the opportunities of growing on faster entrepreneurship. and for one hand and for the other hand is to motivate to change the mindset and to to connect with the ecosystem to connect with the ecosystem and the legal the formal institutions the universities not only one university working hard in entrepreneurship not we need more an ecosystem where all universities work together to build uh, good methods for entrepreneurship to change the, the, the communities, to change the social uh, mindset, and not only think about entrepreneurship as a necessity, but entrepreneurship as a way of life and a way to, to improve our, our brain, our skills, and our knowledge. Thank you, Biri. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we got to know that yes, entrepreneurship education is very important. Now, please, Analia, would you like to share something? We are living through important crises. Our generation is fighting climate change and COVID-19. 
So we need sustainable entrepreneurs, conscious entrepreneurs, that give us the opportunity to produce in a sustainable and responsible way with all those emergencies that we are fighting for. Or, and especially, we need to listen the the change in the paradigm of consumerism. Especially millennials and centennials, they're having a responsible way of consumerism. So I think we have a, an important and historic opportunity to change the way of how we are producing in, in globally and especially because we don't have a planet B. So our entrepreneurs, uh, they have to be not only bold, not only um, innovative, they have to be heroic. They have to change the mindset regarding how to produce, not producing with plastic, for example, how to develop different um, tools uh, and sustainable um, actions uh, through their through their uh, innovations. Um, so I think our generation has a, a huge challenge ahead, uh, and we have to work all together on this with different partnerships around the globe uh, because this is really urgent and we need to solve it in some way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Analia. And yeah, please share something just in few words. Thank you. I think it's a big responsibility to be an entrepreneur today. Um, a snapshot picture where we're dealing with a global pandemic. I think that uh, we all have to work together now uh, because uh, entrepreneurship has been accelerated because of the situation that we're currently in, innovation, technology, and healthcare. I think all the stakeholders have to work together. Those are digital parks, innovation centers, uh, incubators, accelerator, angel investors, venture groups, uh, higher education institutions, governments, and ministries. And if the schools are not teaching entrepreneurship and innovation uh, within the institutions, they should be collaborating with outside uh, stakeholders. And entrepreneurship is a global concept that encompasses all of the economical touch points in a single country as much as it does in a, in a global economy. Uh, so, um, a healthy entrepreneurial system uh, yields a healthy economy, and we need to be there to support the entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurial spirit. Thank you so much, Andrea. Any last few words from Dr. Ruby? I would just like to say that, yes, uh, Pendabic has made uh, a big impact on the overall um, way of thinking and planning. Uh, world has become a smaller family. You know, people have the, the positivity of pandemic is that people have become, uh, they are thinking together. Uh, it's not like one, like people in Africa or people in America or people in Europe. It's like us, what do we need to do? What should be the plan of action? So that's really uh, like thinking from the, like there is a ray of hope in the dark tunnel. So when pandemic is the dark tunnel, we are trying to see from where we can get what we can do to make our future bright. So the call of our is healthy collaborations, not competitions, uh, healthy mentoring, uh, not having the cutthroat competition with the people who are there. And of course, go together as one, create an impact, uh, try to have good relations with each and every um, nook and corner um, organization, association, society, from wherever you think you can get some help, you can get something that will make big sustainable changes coming and you know uh, for, for a positive future and it remains there it, it's not just for a period of time it's there for long duration of time so it's very important especially as educationists we have we are playing a big responsibility the future of the current generation is in our hands so we have to take the step very wisely we have to be very careful and at the same time bring a lot of innovations into practice think in a more creative manner bring creativity in your classrooms make sure that the new normal is accepted very well if this is the new normal we need to accept it we need to uh, make it like as if it's a way of life it's not something like you know you're getting shocked or you are making your students shocked it should be something that you have accepted it embrace change whatever things are coming it's important that you need to embrace it in a way that people are happy and people are able to take it as it comes every single day. 
so practice emotional intelligence because the more you are practicing emotional intelligence you will be able to control your emotions have faith in yourself and deal with others around you in a more systematic and organized manner thank you very much thank you very much cutie thank you so much ruby uh, thank you all for participating for joining us and giving us your valuable time and we have learned a lot and we have learned the main important things that you have uh, said that entrepreneurship education is very important if you are if you want so definitely you need to have education and you need to know the technology that has been emphasized by our panelist so hopefully you have learned that entrepreneurship education is required in every higher institutions and if you want to grow you need education so that brings the end of this session thank you for joining us thanks the panelists thanks the audience in our next